Today we're going to talk about the Tier 8 Swedish battleship Carl the 14th Johan, or Carl Johan the 14th, I don't know, the 14 is between Carl and Johan, so you tell me how you're supposed to say this name. In any case, this is the reward for the ongoing campaign of March, April 2024, and I regret to inform you that I think at best this is a mediocre ship. And at worst, it's pretty bad. In fact, I kind of think it's just pretty bad. I suspect other people will disagree with me. But if we just look at the stats, which I want to go over first, we might think that this ship is actually quite good, just looking at the stats. But in practice, eh, not so much. So let's get into it. I'll read the stats for you. Keep in mind, they are influenced by the commander I am using. And currently I'm using the pan-European battleship commander, the only one, Janko Vukovic. But in this particular match, I was actually using Conrad Helfrich because I was trying to build into the concealment as much as possible. And frankly, I don't know that the commander really makes all that much of a difference. I don't think either commander is really well suited to this ship. But anyway, the stats. To begin with, it's got 72,900 HP which really isn't all that bad, coupled with the armor. It has actually very good armor. It looks a little bit like one of the German battlecruiser hulls, at least to me. And so you might think it's got battlecruiser armor with 32, or rather 27 millimeter plating on the bow and stern, but no, it's 32. And so the armor is quite good. The HP is pretty high. Torpedo damage reduction, though, is very low, only 20%. You do have a sonar consumable, though, so that is helpful. And then we get to the main battery guns, which I think are a real low light of this ship. They are 12 guns, and they are 305 millimeters. So technically, they're battleship caliber. We've got other battleships with 305 millimeter guns, like the Brandenburg, Odin, etc. The guns range out to 17.1 kilometers. We don't really have anything to build into range because we have no accuracy, Commander. Reload time, though, with the reload module and uh, Vukovic's skills selected. He's got one skill in the third row that decreases shell switching time when the guns are fully loaded, but also decreases reload time a little bit. So I've got that active. Reload time, 19.8 seconds, which honestly is really excellent. And turret traverse time, 28.6 seconds. So pretty snappy turret traverse. Maximum HE shell damage, 4,350, 28% fire chance. Maximum AP shell damage, 8,400, a number that I have very, very rarely seen because these AP shells do not like to find the Citadel, in my experience. The thing also has torpedoes, which you would think would be the highlights of the ship because they are kind of unique. They are 16 torpedoes, 8 on either side of the ship, and they're the pan-European destroyer torpedoes, so they go at 86 knots base, they've got a 10 kilometer range, and they hit for 10,700 damage with a torpedo detectability of 1.6 km by C. So not all that bad in terms of stats, and plus the torpedoes also reload in 86 seconds. So just over a minute. AA defenses, being a pan-European ship, are probably all right. Like it's got 120 millimeter guns, for example, that do average DPS of 146, and they have a 5.2 km range. So this thing can probably shoot down some planes. Maneuverability, you would think it's actually good. It's got a top speed of 31.4 knots a turning circle of 890, and a rudder shift of 16.4. The turning circle and the rudder shift are both fine. The top speed of 31 knots, that sounds like, okay, this ship would be pretty fast, but it is not. I don't think so. Look, we're going at a full turn, and we're going 24 knots. This thing seems to bleed off speed, maybe more than other battleships, and it just feels really slow when it's maneuvering which I don't necessarily enjoy. And then the concealment, which I think is my 
most major problem with this ship. In this game, I was running Conrad Helfrich. I had Kondo and I think Swirsky as inspirations. And then Conrad Helfrich, being a universal commander, has one skill in his tree of skills that reduces the concealment by a further 6%. So combine that, Kondo, Swirsky, and the concealment mod, and I had the concealment in this particular battle down to 117 With the current build that I'm using on Vukovic, I've got it down to 12 kilometers even. And I'll explain why I'm highlighting the concealment so much in a second, but basically I don't understand what this ship is supposed to be for. The main battery guns are not good. I've tried them every which way from Sunday. I've used Accuracy Inspirations. I've used Aiming Systems Mod 1 instead of the Secondary Mod, which that is something we should also talk about too before I forget. The ship does have secondaries. It's got 12 120mm secondaries and 14 150s. They range out to 6.8 kilometers base. So you might be thinking that you could build this ship for secondaries. And if you do, you'll get the maximum range with a full secondary build up to almost 10 kilometers. Not quite. The problem, though, is not the range. The problem is the accuracy of the secondaries. It just isn't there. They're standard accuracy secondaries, from what I can tell. And that is to say they aren't accurate at all. They couldn't hit the broadside of a barn from the inside. So as I was playing the ship with a secondary build, I quickly started to question why I was building the secondaries because of course, in order to get the most out of them, you have to use the secondary module in the slot where you could use aiming systems mod one. And without aiming systems mod one, the main battery guns can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn from the inside. Even with it, they're not all that good, although they are noticeably better. So I settled on running Aiming Systems Mod 1 just so I could hit things with these guns. The big problem with hitting things with these guns is that the AP just isn't there. It doesn't seem to have great penetration at all. And the accuracy is all over the place, so you certainly can't reliably dial it in to hit a citadel. And I've had cases where I've been shooting at, say, a Musashi from 9 kilometers away and gotten a pitiful 8,000 damage from a couple of pens and zero citadels. The guns just don't have the punching power. And the torpedoes. Well, let's get into the reason why I think this ship is not so great. I want you to keep something in mind when it comes to ship design in World of Warships Legends, okay? Every ship, with some exceptions like Suzuya, that we get in World of Warships Legends was originally designed for World of Warships PC. And in a way, when they bring it from PC to console, they are doing something akin to a translation, right? Well, it just so happens that I own the Carl Johan on WoW's PC. In fact, I got it for free. Well, no, not for free. I bought some Santa crates over the Christmas holiday seasons and got it out of one of those. And so I've played the ship extensively on WoW's PC before it debuted in Legends. And I have some thoughts on the comparisons between the two. Look at these torpedoes, by the way. Full health, nearly full health, Amagi. We launch all eight torpedoes into his broadside. And even though he's not at full health, it's not enough to dev strike him. But of course, the secondaries and the floodings, we've got fires, floodings, burning on the Amagi and the other battleship here. So we're actually going to get a double strike. It's just a flesh wound medal, which I find kind of amusing. Probably the most amusing thing I've gotten out of this ship. 139,000 damage, certainly not bad. We are going to lose this game, though, unfortunately. In any case, I've played the Carl Johan extensively on PC, and there, its identity seems to be, weirdly enough, a stealth torpedo battleship because on pc the torpedo stats are the same in terms of speed and damage but in terms of range those torpedoes go at 13 and a half kilometers we're saddled with 10 and we have really no way to extend the range 
Then on top of that, the concealment for Johan on PC. When you build for it, which you should, because that's sort of the standard battleship build on PC, the concealment is 10.6 kilometers. So you have 10.6 kilometers versus 13.5. That means you have a three kilometer window to stealth launch your torpedoes. And so the idea is you get yourself into a position where the enemy team is pushing in. As they push in, you launch your torpedoes at them, and then you shoot them with your main battery guns, which are just as mediocre on PC as they are here. The problem with this ship in translation in Legends, I think, is that the torpedo range simply cannot be larger than the concealment range because of the way the commander system works here and because I think they nerfed the Johan's base concealment significantly enough that you cannot get the concealment down. And so this ship, I think, has sort of lost its identity in translation. And I realize these are two very different games, so perhaps it was Wargaming's thinking that this ship could not be a stealth torpedo boat battleship in Legends. I have no idea, and frankly, I have no idea why it couldn't be, because the secondaries and the main battery guns are so anemic, in my opinion, what else does it have going for it besides the fact that it has some armor and it's got these torpedoes? I don't know. So unfortunately, I think the ship is pretty mediocre. Probably you could go out there and have some fun with it. I kind of think this battle that we're seeing the tail end of right now was quote-unquote fun, let's say. Well, it's fun until the blue team loses tragically. But that double strike, it's just a flesh wound, was at least fun. The rest of my experience with this ship simply has not been. Unfortunately, I don't think it's very good. I would like to see the torpedo range buffed. They don't need to buff the concealment so I can get it down to 10.6 km like you can do on PC, because that's just honestly ridiculous to have a battleship that stealthy. But they could at the very least buff the torpedo range to the 13.5 kilometers it has on PC. And then if you wanted to build for stealth, as I do on all my battleships, you could get the concealment down to 12.5, 12, maybe even 11.7 if you wanted to really go with health rich like I did in this battle, which I don't necessarily recommend. Vukovic is probably a better commander to use, at least until we have somebody that is more well-suited to the Carl Johan, because I think Vukovic was sort of designed for that Tier 5 pan-European battleship that we got into the game a long time ago. Nobody remembers it. In fact, I can't even remember the name. But yeah, I just don't think this ship is all that good of a campaign reward. Initially, I was happy to see that this ship was the campaign reward rather than the Dyson, which honestly I really ended up enjoying much more than this ship, but the Dyson would have been the fourth premium tier 8 IJN campaign ship in less than a year if they had made it that one. So I was kind of happy to see this one as the campaign reward, but unfortunately... I just think it's not very good. Doesn't mean you shouldn't buy the Admiralty backing. You might enjoy this ship, even though I don't. I think it's overall mediocre. But uh, there are other goodies in the campaign that you can get along the way that may be more worth it than this ship. At least we have an entirely new line of IJN light cruisers to dig into, so we'll probably start looking at those next. But Carl Johan... Unless somehow the torpedo range gets buffed, I just don't understand the ship's reason for existing. I don't understand the design concept that Wargaming had when they were trying to balance it. It's just so far removed from the ship on PC that inspired it, and I think it suffers greatly for it. So... Those are my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.